You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. What's going on everyone, Ken in here. Oh, there I am, what's up? Hey, how you guys doing? It's Saturday, it's time for another Ask Cam Kenny question. Uh, you know what, we've got a couple of them here in today's episode because uh, I'm feeling generous. <laughs> Not only that, I'm feeling motivated. Uh, here we are, we're hanging out in the front. I'm just kind of checking things out. Uh, but today's questions have to do with tortoises and their digestion. And so I thought, you know what, let's go over that because digestion is a very, very important thing when talking about tortoises. And you also have to know the type of tortoises you have. Like for example, Socrates is a Galapagos tortoise. And why you need to know the type of tortoises you have is because you wanna make sure you're feeding them a diet that their bodies are designed to process and digest. So Socrates is what you would consider more of a grazing or foraging species that doesn't really live. Hey, look, look in there, there's Darwin. Uh, the more of a foraging species, okay? More akin to the Sulcata tortoise in that these guys aren't gonna have a very high fruit content. Now, that brings us to the first question and the first question is from Christopher Marks. How much fruit is too much fruit to feed your tortoise? Well Christopher, again we're talking about Galapagos tortoises, Sulcata tortoises, Star tortoises, mm, radiated tortoises, um, Hermans, all the Greek tortoises, Egyptian tortoises, all of those tortoises are going to be what you would consider grassland or grazing species of tortoises. Uh, they're gonna eat a lot of grasses, a lot of roughage, a lot of leaves, a lot of uh, weeds. Um, basically, that's what they're going to eat. Fruit is going to be consumed on a much less regular basis because, you know, they're gonna basically uh, get fruit seasonally. Even some of the tortoises that encounter fruit more often uh, like your forest species, like the Burmese mountain tortoises, the elongated tortoises, uh, redfoot and yellowfoot tortoises. Here's an Ostradamus. Okay, so those tortoises are gonna eat fruit more regularly. Now, how much is too much fruit for guys like these or the sulcatas or star tortoises and stuff like that? Well, number one, you don't wanna feed them any citrus of any kind ever because that's not something that they would naturally consume. Okay, so basically you don't wanna feed citrus at all. Sugars uh, can be detrimental like from grapes and things like that. I never feed these guys grapes uh, or anything like pineapple or, you know, just anything that is just too high in sugar. Um, what I like to do as far as fruits for these guys, and I, again, I'm talking about fruits for all kind of grassland tortoises. Some people would say, oh, you should never feed fruit at all, ever. I disagree with that um, because fruit can sometimes be a great way to introduce water into the system. So having said that, a fruit that I really love to give them, maybe uh, once a week a little bit, is some watermelon. Watermelon is gonna be a great way to get those guys hydrated. Uh, it's gonna keep them nice and healthy. Uh, they love it, it tastes good and it quenches the thirst, and it's a great way to introduce some water into these guys. So that's very important. Uh, I like that. Every now and again, they'll get some honeydew or cantaloupe, and again, remember, I'm talking also about sulcatas, and you can do that with star tortoises, leopard tortoises, um, but I wouldn't go once, I would not do that more than once a week. Now why, why would you not do that? Well, we've said it so many times before uh, on the program, that when feeding fruit, it's high in those sugars, right? It's high in moisture. If you're introducing too much moisture into their diet, they are not gonna have solid poops. Now, let's find a poop. I wanna show you what a turd, uh, a tortoise turd should look like. Now, we've gotta do a little exploring <laughs> for tortoise spores, if you will, but you basically want the poop to be firm, well-formed, 
and when it comes out it's going to have uh, enough moisture on the mucus to just pass through their digestive system easily uh, you don't want it to be too wet or too dry now if you start seeing diarrhea or really loose stools like here's a poop that has uh, been di pretty much disintegrating but it's it comes out as basically a pellet a large pellet and uh, what will happen is you can see there's still some moisture in there but if we look look at what they've got there's leaves Look at this, hay, grasses. You can really explore the turd and uh, see all that's in there. But mostly it's grass, right? So what'll happen is any fruit or cactus that I use, which has a lot of nice moisture in it as well. Cactus is something you guys should be looking to feed them as much uh, often as possible. Here's another spore, look at that. Okay, so um, you can kind of see just how well formed these are, right? Now, if it had diarrhea, it would be mostly liquid, uh, very little substance to it, and uh, we probably wouldn't even find it after it just dried up. So it'd be a very, very loose stool, and that's not something you want when it's uh, when you're coming to tortoises, okay? Because these guys uh, are gonna have you know some problems with their digestive tract. Now, I've said it before on the show, I'll just reiterate here in case this is your first video and you're just learning about tortoises. Tortoises digest very, very slowly. They have a slow metabolism being ectotherms or cold-blooded. And that means that they really don't have to... Uh, they don't have to uh, eat in foods that are super high in nutrition. So they're eating grasses and leaves and things of that nature. And when they eat them, they stay inside these extremely long herbivore intestines for a long time. So the body, their digestive tract, is extracting as much nutrients as they can out of something that you wouldn't think had any nutrients. But their bodies are incredibly adapted at pulling out as much of the nutrients they need from the foods they eat. So it takes a long time. These guys uh, slow and steady, right? If you think about it, uh, everything they do is slow, including digestion. So when we add too much fruit, we're doing two things. We're gonna speed up digestion because they're gonna have loose stools and you're gonna push all that good stuff through faster than it can actually be absorbed into the body. And also you're introducing sugars into the system that could potentially um, raise the pH in their digestive tract. Okay, change the chemical composition that's going on down in there. Uh, these guys uh, ferment food, um, so they have a process, a chemical digestion uh, of fermentation, and what that does is it's basically breaking down cellulose. And when you add these other uh, acids into their body, it changes the pH and it kills the gut flora or bacteria that live inside their bodies. And that will then, uh, just cause problems with uh, the way they digest. Uh, loose stools, not getting enough nutrients, not able to digest once you start reintroducing the proper foods. They will not be able to digest them. They can't break down uh, the cellulose, which is the structure that calls, uh, creates the cell wall in plants. So tortoises and other herbivores have an ability through fermentation to actually break that stuff down. Now, when you walk on over to the elongated or the cherry head tortoises, these guys eat a higher fruit qu uh, quantity of fruit because they live in areas where they're more often going to run into fruit. We're talking about uh, humid grasslands and forests. There's Darth Maul. Here's a male uh, cherry head and they're out and about. It's a nice temperature right now. So these guys are able to kind of move about. And once they see me, they all tend to come on out. Really pretty tortoise species. We love the, uh, we love this species of tortoise. Uh, just a fantastic little species. So um, basically guys, they can eat more fruit. So you could do that two to three times a week, some fruit, but add in the grasses and the haze and you know, your leaves and flowers, cactus, all that stuff as well. Here's the elongated tortoises. Okay, really, really cool species. So these guys will again be able to take more of the fruit. But again, look guys, you're not just gonna feed all one thing, okay? That's not what you do. You don't feed all one thing. You wanna vary the diet so that their bodies are working out 
and using all the uh, processes, processes rather, that they need to, to break down the different foods. Okay, so it's not just one thing. It might be some Missouri, it might be some collards, it might be some romaine, a little bit of watermelon, a little bit of mango, a little papaya. Now papaya is gonna come into this uh, game here in a little bit. Uh, this Ask Cam Cunning, because we're going to answer two questions. Uh, and I'm going to dovetail it right into this now. So check it out. A little segue time. And uh, we're going to ask the second question. It's from uh, Margot Maloney, who's a DMV. That means a doctor of veterinary medicine. Uh, always cool when you have DMVs uh, hanging out here on Camp Kennan. I appreciate that, guys. Love the work you all do. Uh, now, they've asked, they asked me, have you had to treat any of the tortoises for foreign body ingestion, constipation, blockage, i.e. tree bark, gravel, leaf litter, plastic, trash, uh, etc.? Very good question. Um, you know, these animals live here in nature, okay? Uh, I feed them off the leaves. I'll feed them sometimes on rocks or on trays or they'll just graze and do their thing. So why is this very similar? Why, why are we talking about this in today's episode? Well, the two go hand in hand, what the animals eat and then their overall digestive health. Uh, from time to time, animals can become impacted even in the wild. They can become impacted for a myriad of reasons. They could have a parasite. They could be, uh, they could themselves be, um, what's that, dehydrated. Uh, and they could also be eating the wrong foods and not eating the proper foods uh, can cause that. And then as Ms. Uh, Dr. Maloney asks, uh, it could be the introduction of a foreign object into their uh, good old digestive tracts. And foreign object, like she said, um, would have been plastic or pebble or bark or anything that's causing a blockage, uh, which could be a problem because what will happen, guys? is in the early stages of the blockage, nothing will happen. You can't tell what's going on. They'll be moving around, they'll be walking around. But what happens is once the animal starts to uh, really get into the later stages of having some problems with their digestive tract, what'll happen is they will become lethargic. They won't move, they'll stop eating, and they'll basically just waste away. And the only way you can really find out whether or not they have an impaction is to bring them to a doctor of veterinary medicine and get an x-ray. Uh, the x-ray should show any kind of blockages, any foreign bodies that might be inside the animal's digestive system. Now, what have I done to kind of help this out? Now, when we talk about, we're gonna walk on over to them. I'm gonna give you an example. These guys, I haven't had any real issues with them because they're eating fruits, they're eating things up off the ground. Now, when we walk over to the sulcatas, however, which is where we're going right now, sulcatas are always facing the ground, nibbling on grass and eating, eating, eating. Now here in Florida, we have sandy soil. Sometimes they're gonna consume a little bit of sand. And what'll happen over time is that sand builds up in those long digestive systems that we talked about and it could pose a problem. So I mentioned earlier, one of the best ways to keep these animals moving is to feed them regularly because a tortoise's digestive system only works when it's full of food. And a tortoise is only starving when that digestive system is completely empty. Usually it takes two weeks for food to pass all the way through the digestive system. Uh, the sulcatas are kind of relaxing right now. It's a little bit hot, so they're not actually grazing. But anyway, going back to what I was talking about is these guys are going to need to continually eat to keep their digestive systems going. Once they stop eating uh, or once you haven't fed them in a while or there's no food in their system, the system actually shrinks, shuts down, and it can be difficult to start it up again. So you never want to starve your tortoise uh, by not feeding them for a long period of time. Uh, the second thing is hydration. There's got to be water available to keep all the processes going metabolically and, and digestively. Uh, and then the other thing that I was talking about though, is if you look down on the soil, right? They're eating the grass, eating the grass. Every once in a while, they'll pull a whole root out and swallow some of the sandy soil. It builds up over time. Now, how do you stop or help that from happening? Well, I mentioned two things, keeping their diet going, keeping uh, some watermelon, things like that. I mentioned papaya. Papaya is actually a really nice natural diuretic that once in a while I will feed to my sulcatas and that will help flush the system out, okay? The other thing you can do, and this is kind of crazy and fun, and, uh, but it's a, it's a little tortoise hack, if you will. That's why we're here, right? For a little tortoise hacking. Let's go over by this 
blue tub there's a tortoise hanging out by it. Um, so another hack that I learned was from my friends at the feed supply store, town and country here in Jupiter, Florida. And there's a product, it's something called psyllium. It's spelled with a P, Psyll uh, psyllium. It's found also in something human beings actually eat uh, and that or drink uh, to flush their systems out or to help impactions in human beings. And it is basically something uh, called Metamucil. All right, the brand name is Metamucil. It's basically a drink you can mix up and you get the, you drink it yourself. Now, how do you get a tortoise to eat it? Well, you can go to a horse feed store, like I mentioned, and it comes in pellet form. You can sprinkle that pellet onto the haze or grasses or whatever the tortoises might be eating. They'll eat it. What it does is it causes the sand to kind of bind together and they can expel it and flush the system out. You want to keep them hydrated too, very important. The other thing, guys, uh, that you can do is buy Metamucil or generic brand, uh, you know, what they would call psyllium or um, a laxative, but it's got to be uh, whatever the brand or the uh, off brand of Metamucil would be. I would buy something that um, kind of had a, no real taste to it. Here we're in the leopard tortoises. They're a grassland species, as you may or may not know. It's very hot, so they're in the shade. So you buy that, um, you go ahead and you buy the um, psyllium or the metamucil and you sprinkle that very fine powder that should be mixed up uh, you can actually sprinkle it on their food and they'll eat it it'll mix in their bellies and it'll help them pass whatever they have going on uh, another thing that you should put into the routine here uh, maintenance especially if you're keeping animals outdoor is uh, maybe once every six months you got to do some kind of deworming uh, with panicure paste put it on the food um, if there's a, any kind of other bacteria you'd, or um, you know protozoa, things like that, you'd want to do some kind of flagell. Uh, but these are very specific uh, things that you'd need to do. Uh, we'll discuss that in another video. All right, so I think we've covered quite some ground here on today's Ask Camp Cannon. We wandered. I mean, not only did I cover ground literally, I think figuratively we did as well. Look at that big hole I got to get to. I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, we covered it, man. Uh, not too much fruit for the grassland species once a week. Any kind of non-citrus, you know, melon or uh, some fru fruits like that that are mostly water is good to introduce into their diet. Um, you know, if you're going to give them a strawberry once in a while, hey, man, it's not going to hurt them. People freak out and say you should never, ever do it. Once in a while will not hurt your animals. Don't make it a habit. I've said it before. Never one type of food all the time that is the death knell for your animal it needs a varied varied diet uh, the other question of course is do i treat for that only when it happens uh doc only if i notice some kind of uh, problem with the animal for example if i notice one of my tortoises isn't moving i know it's sick i bring it in we get an x-ray and we go from there if there's some kind of blockage i have done enemas <laughs> actually on Darwin, the big Galapagos tortoise. Um, I've done enemas. Uh, we've done, um, you know, just uh, all kinds of like mineral oil I've introduced into their throat by tubing. Um, and of course, just preventative stuff like the psyllium. Sometimes that psyllium really does a good job. Um, you know, if you introduce that into the routine every few months. So, okay guys, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope we learned something here today. I am going to uh, continue on along my day and get things done. I hope you're having a fun one wherever you may be. And uh, thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Head on over to the Gam Kennan Army channel where you'll see even more footage, even more fun from the world of reptiles here at Camp Kennan and our viewers. And also go to patreon.com slash Camp Kennan if you're interested in helping us continue to produce quality educational reptile content. That is not clickbaity. It's all education all the time. And uh, thank you very much. We'll see you guys soon. And we got an unboxing, and you know I love doing unboxings, but today's unboxing is also going to be a swimming with. <laughs>